Hey ladies and gents, uh, it's Kimmy and I'm back. I went on a two week hiatus, but here I am. So I uh, will explain in a few seconds why I was gone, but this week's video is talking about something that hits all really home to me. It's talking about how to deal with anxiety and possibly depression when you are in a military relationship. Um, so I guess I really should begin by saying I'm sorry. I have been gone for two weeks. I hit a, I want to say a rough patch in my life. I was going through a lot of stuff in my head and it's kind of inspired this video actually. And, but I'm good now. I'm fine. I'm healthy and I'm happy again. I mean, I was happy before, but I'm finally, you know, back in that good mental state and I'm back to my videos and Actually, what happened really inspired my video. So hopefully anybody who's kind of dealing with the same things that I am can be helped by this. <laughs> so let's get the show rolling. <laughs> Need to be stop being so cheesy. Today's topic is anxiety and depression. Um, mostly focusing on the anxiety aspect because as a military significant other, you find yourselves in a lot of stressful situations and sometimes your body can react in a negative way which can cause you to have a brain something or other <laughs> which can cause anxiety or depression. Um, I was diagnosed with sporadic and generalized anxiety disorder in September of this year. It was sudden. It was terrifying, but I am currently good. I am on my very last round of anxiety medication, um, and I'm finally getting better, which is really awesome. So I'd like to talk to you about my anxiety a little bit. It started off in August, um, and it was just like very, I couldn't understand it. I was sleeping a lot less. I was eating a lot less. I was throwing up a lot. And I would start getting shakes, and I'd start getting nervous and anxious, and it felt like the world was closing in on me. It felt like I couldn't breathe. I was just, uh, it was a really bad time. And I didn't know it at the time, but those are all really common symptoms of anxiety. And I'm not blaming Kevin at all, but this wasn't even his fault. This was totally related to another thing that happened in my life, but... A lot of, I see a lot of on the Milso tag, you know, can't sleep, um, I can't eat, I'm sad, I'm nervous, I lost my appetite. And those are really classic signs of anxiety. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Anxiety is normal. As I mentioned before, um, a lot of the common side effects that I see are, you know, sleeping bad, sadness. And it can be caused by the stress of being in a military relationship. <laughs> being a military girlfriend or wife or fiancé is not easy. It's consistently worrying about your partner. It's consistently worrying about funds, about base housing, OPSEC. It's, it's not easy. And so that can cause a lot of stress in your life. And stress can lead to anxiety. So this is kind of going to talk about the different ways to deal with it. And the number one way to deal if you think you have a serious anxiety problem is to see your doctor. I am not a doctor, so I can't tell you that you have anxiety or not. But if you think that you have anxiety, if you can't sleep, if you're throwing up after your meals, if thoughts are plaguing your head that are distracting you from your daily life, go see your doctor. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I proudly say that I have struggled and survived anxiety issues. You know, it's something that people deal with. And your doctor can give you medicine or recommend a therapist that will help you. You don't have to suffer with this for your entire life. The first thing you do is when you feel like you're really anxious or you're having a panic attack is to step back. You need to step back from the situation. And it may sound silly, but talk to yourself. I say it all the time. I'm like, Kimmy, think about it. These are not rational thoughts. You know, if I'm worried about Kevin, it's Kevin is safe. You heard from him an hour ago. He's okay. If it's about school, it's you have a really good GPA. You're doing good. Don't freak out. So the big thing is you have to talk to yourself. Become friends with yourself. Tell yourself it's going to be okay. 
because it is. I know it sounds lame, but it's going to get better. And it's only going to get better if you tell yourself it's going to get better. And that's the first way of dealing with your anxiety is telling yourself it's A, going to get better, and B, if your thoughts are rational, you are not thinking rationally, and you have to admit that to yourself. My second piece of advice, if you're feeling anxious, is to distract yourself. Distraction was the thing that really helped me deal with my anxiety. I had a lot of problems sleeping. So what i do is I would play a movie right before I went to bed, and it's usually a Disney movie because they say something that makes you happy or something that distracts your mind, but... I get nightmares from scary movies. I still love them, but I get nightmares, so that wasn't a really good thing to watch. So I put on, like, a Disney movie, and I'd watch. And a big thing is, if you have problems sleeping, ask your doctor, or you don't have to ask your doctor for tea, but I take melatonin sometimes if I can't fall asleep. It is a natural supplement and will help you sleep and knocks you out. But it doesn't, like, knock you out where, like, you're still out, like, 12 hours later. It's really good, and it will help you sleep. But the thing is, distract yourself. I mean, if you're start getting anxious, clean. Cleaning's my thing. When I get anxious, I clean. It's really neurotic, but it works. Sometimes you can run. I go to the gym a lot. That also helps my anxiety. Exercise really does help, so. <laughs> Another really good technique is to try one of those really, really corny techniques that the therapists recommend or that you see online. Because... Believe it or not, some of them actually do work. And even if you feel silly, you're going to laugh about it. And laughter is one of the best medicines. So, I don't know. For example, one of my favorites is the worry sheet. This is my worry sheet. And I'm going to write down all my big worries. So, school. Um, my internship. My bitch of a roommate. <laughs> and for military heroes, it can be if Kevin's safe in the Navy, if, you know, he's going to call later, anything you want. So here is my worksheet. And you know what you're going to do with the sheet? <laughs> <laughs> I might feel really corny and stupid doing that, but it helps. Soon you're going to realize that these little worries are just things on paper. They may be important, but if you can realize how insignificant you are to your happiness, then don't worry. And my final piece of advice is to talk to your significant other. I know you don't want to. I know it can be embarrassing. And I myself had a lot of problems telling Kevin, hey, there's something wrong with me. I'm not perfect. But he loves me and he accepts me either way. And I can tell him now, hey, baby, I had an anxiety attack today, but I'm fine now. And you know what? They might not, it might not be something you want to tell them when they're on deployment or when they're in basic training because you don't want them to think about that. But if you can admit to them that you're not perfect, they're still going to love you. And talking to them can help, especially if a lot of your anxiety comes from them. Talking to them being saying, hey, I'm a bit anxious. I'm nervous. I, I'm in pain. My, my brain hurts. My chest hurts. I'm nauseous. Just saying that to them can make them see that, hey, you know, Maybe it's either A, that step they need to take in your relationship, or B, it's that, you know, they can confirm, say, you know what, honey, Kevin always does this. He goes, you know what, baby, no matter how much we fight, or no matter what happens, or no matter how far away I am, I'm always going to love you. And he has been the reason I've been able to get over my anxiety. So if you feel like you have anxiety or depression or something like that, talk to your S.O., they will understand and they will love you because you are perfect no matter what's wrong with you. And I think you're perfect and I think I'm perfect. And you know what? Perfect is being imperfect and anxiety is a perfect example. So I really hope my video helps some of you. If you ever want to talk to me about anxiety or depression or anything you might feel like you're going through, my Tumblr is above. Right there. It's to, 
Oh, I changed my URL. So big ups. It's now otter hyphen chaos. Like otter, like that kind of otter. Dot tumblr.com. We have our Gmail account at tumblrmilsos at gmail.com. And our Tumblr account, which I already said. <laughs> at milsotv.tumblr.com. And we hope to hear from you soon. So remember, you are beautiful and you are perfect. And nothing can change that. <laughs>